not going back Moving ahead We're to declare to you The past is over You Things remain new Surrender my life to Christ And when the morning arose Then the angels hastened Lot then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. While he lingered, lingered the men laid hold his hand upon his uh, hand upon his wife, and upon the hands of his two daughters. The Lord being merciful unto him, and they brought him forth and set him without the city. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay in the plains. Escape to the mountains, lest thou be consumed. And Lot said unto them, Oh, not so, my Lord. This is here it is. Behold, now thy servant has found grace in the sight, thy sight, and thou hast magnified the mercy which thou hast showed unto me in saving my life. And I cannot escape to the mountains lest some evil take me and I die. Luke 17 and 32. Luke 17 and 32. Remember Lot's wife. That's all it says. That's all it says. Uh, you, you may be seated. Uh, remember Lot's wife. Uh, many of you woke up this morning and dressed yourselves and headed out the door, got into your vehicles, and went about your business, headed towards your destination. And while sitting in the car, the first thing you did was to look in the rearview mirror. Yes, you look backwards. Uh, you look back to see what was behind you, back down memory lane, back down the chorus of the life, your life. And for a brief moment, you was reminiscing about when times were better for you, amen, until you realized that you were sitting in your car. You see, you can endanger your life by taking your eyes off the road for a moment. The same thing happens when you disobey God's commandments. And so you see, there's a danger this morning for looking back. That's what I want to talk about today, a danger of looking back. Sometimes we second guess ourselves. Sometimes we think that we're not doing what the Lord would have us to do. But if Jesus came this morning and warned you of certain dangers, would you take heed? Would you pay attention? Would you at least consider what our Lord and Savior is saying about your soul and your condition of your life right now? Now, I'm not, unlike Lot's wife, she didn't take heed. She looked back. She disregarded and ignored the warnings that she had been given. Amen. Most of us are familiar with the story in the Old Testament record of Lot's wife, Genesis 19 and 6. We have just read into your hearing. And the story of the New Testament account of Luke's story of Lot's wife, they correlate with the issues of our life. They speak to the issues of our life today and right now. Once you read that, it seems like you're looking at the day's news. You're looking at yesterday's news in the paper today. Amen. When we look at this historical backdrop of our text this morning, we found out that Sodom was located at the southern tip of the Dead Sea. The ancient world's uh, cities was like Sodom and Gomorrah were places of wealth and power. The city of Sodom was given its name by its vile and obnoxious practice 
of its homosexuality and behavior. Amen. Now, in modern times, in spite of the magnificence and in spite of all the brilliance of these cities and buildings, our cities are bankrupt financially, morally, and spiritually. Amen. But most of our cities are famous for pollution, poverty, and crime. It's interesting to know that Sodom, everywhere that you see it in the Bible, is condemned. I want you to know that the face of God is set against evil and he will judge it with a righteous judgment. Amen. Now, if I assigned a few scriptures to this text and a few of them would say that the Bible says the men of Sodom were exceedingly wicked and sinful against the Lord. These men did degrading and devile, filthy deeds in the plain sight of the city. And this is an act that is forbidden by the law and by God. Amen. First right. Kings 14, 24 says that, and there was also sodomites in the land, and they did according to all the abominations of the, which the Lord cast out of the children of Israel. Sodomy was one of the enslaving sins. It seems by scripture that it captured them, it held them when they partook of these lewd acts. Amen. It was a sin that forms and causes you to do other unrighteous things. The Bible says in Romans 1 and 26, for this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. Even their women did change the natural use, that which is against nature. Likewise, also men leaving the natural use of women burned in their lust for one another. Here in this text, we have lesbianism, homosexuality, and unnatural acts. Amen. And the Bibles will punish people who deal with things like that. You can't escape the judgment of God. Amen. And I may be looking at somebody right now. They might say, well, well, that's not my issue. That's not my sin. But I'll have you to know that sin is sin and God will judge it. Amen. So don't put yourself out of this situation. Don't say, put this on a shelf and say, this ain't for me this morning. We have developed a kind of looking over the fence mentality, which is basically saying everybody else is doing it mentality when the bible says this is now my bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh and she shall be called woman so you see god created adam for eve and not adam for steve you've heard it before amen it's not some colloquial phrase it's not something to, some little child came up with on a school phrase it's politically correct amen it's biblical to say that that's what god does now, just because others are doing a certain thing, it doesn't give you the right to do it as children of God. You can't hide sin from God. Amen. I got to tell somebody, if you try to do it, you'll lose your place. You'll lose your blessings. But the Bible says, be sure your sin, your sin will find you out. Let me say this. Whoever came up with the phrase, whatever happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Make no bones about it. Whatever happens in Vegas will soon get out. Amen. This situation got out about Sodom and Gomorrah. It'll get out about your secret sin. It'll get about, about what you're doing in life. Amen. The Bible says, that would not God find this out? For he knows the secrets of your heart. There's no use of you saying and looking back and wonder who told it, who's tell, who put this thing out on me. It wasn't on Instagram. It wasn't on Facebook. Amen. It's called the lifestyle. And whenever you live a lewd, loose lifestyle, God will portray it and people will pick it up and they'll read it like a cheap magazine. But back to our text, it says, remember Lot's wife. This text is one of the shortest verses in the Bible outside of Jesus wept. Amen. 
Lot's wife represents those who attached to earthly things. She is a negative illustration of the consequences of holding on to life possessions. Amen. Once you buy a new car and drive it off the lost four-room lot, it's no longer a new car. Amen. We've got to stop low-hanging on the things. Start treating them like they mean so much to us. Amen. Treat your brother and sisters better than you treat your things and stuff. Amen. God is trying to show us some things in life, amen, in this text. Because things and stuff will control you. And the next thing you'll know, you'll be turned around. And the judgment day, you'll discover just how much you lost trying to get it all. Somebody get that on the way out the door this morning, amen. Trying to get everything, but you lost it all. Webster's Dictionary defines the word remember as to bring back or to recall to the mind, to call, to take heed, amen. God has always attached a certain importance to remembering. He wants you to remember, amen. He wants you to remember the rainbow was so mankind will remember that God will never smite the earth with a flood again. He wants you to remember the annual feast of the Jews was a pilgrimage where three times each year they made it in the sake of unity, amen. And in the New Testament, the Lord's Supper is us for us to remember. It's a moral, memorial, amen. Isn't it funny how Jesus Wants his followers to remember him. But us as our loved ones, as they have passed away, we try to quickly forget them. Amen. But Jesus wants us to remember. He went to to Calvary's cross for us. Amen. He loves you enough to die for you. And I thank God that he died for me this morning. I thank God that he is a lover of my soul, amen. And most of us are trying to forget what we lost. And most of us are trying to forget that this is just a historical fact, amen. But it's a constant reminder to the church that he's coming back and, and he's still in our spiritual food, amen. He is our spiritual food that we drink and eat on a daily basis. He is that rock that we stand on I got three things left to say, and I'm going to get out of your way. Amen. When you have problems in life, you should look at the root of your problem. When you consider Lot's wife, and she had some spiritual problems, amen. Many of us have spiritual problems and don't know how to deal with them. Many of us have spiritual problems that don't know where to take them to. But if you take them to Jesus, he'll teach you how to deal with them. Amen. The thought number one, throughout the Bible... And in Sunday school classes and in church settings for thousands of years, men have wondered why this woman looked back even though though she was forewarned. There are three problems here that Lot's wife had in her life. And the Bible revealed them here in this passage. Number one is disbelief. Number two, disobedience. Number three is deception. Amen. She had a problem with her faith. The Bible says every man is given a measure of faith. Faith is trusting in God no matter what happens, no matter what you do, no matter what comes your way. I like it what Job said, though he may slay me, yet I will trust him. I'm going to trust Jesus when my money gets low. I'm going to trust Jesus when I lose my job. I'm going to trust Jesus when they talk about me. I'm going to trust Jesus when I can't count on nobody else. Amen. You can be up a tree without a rope. Yet I'm going to trust Jesus because he'll reel me in. When you look back, she didn't really believe that God would do what he said it would do. Amen. That's the tragedy of things right now in this day and time. You don't believe God will do what he said he would do. Amen. Like her. We are like her in this day and time. We don't believe the word of God. We don't believe what he's prophesied. All you have to do is turn the leaves of the pages and God will tell you what he's going to do. Amen. She thought God was bluffing, joking, and playing with her. 
Many of us make the same gamble today. Amen. We linger around when it comes to support the things of God. When we linger around and we haphazardly do what God asks us to do for the church and to support the church. Amen. We don't support the programs. We don't follow the pastor. We don't do what we're supposed to give. We don't give like we're supposed to give and God is going to judge that one day. You, you need a blessing. You ask God to bless you. First thing you do when you don't bless and then nobody blesses you, said, I ain't going back there no way. Amen. And when we do come to church, we're looking at our watch. And we never take God's word seriously. Amen. Friends and brethren, God is not bluffing. If you don't believe me, just ask the rich man in Luke's chapter when he went to hell and they saw Lazarus sitting at the bosom of, of Abraham. If you don't believe me, just ask Judas Iscariot. He was identified as a betrayer, a betrayer who kissed Jesus. Amen. And, and I got to tell somebody this morning, if you are a betrayer of Christ, you can come back in the fold with Christ. Amen. If you've walked out and left him behind and looked behind, he'll receive you back this morning. Amen. All you got to do is repent and don't be like Jews, Judas this morning. There's a literal place called hell. Hades, if you prefer it. Amen. I got to tell somebody, if you go, you will go there if you don't come to Jesus for salvation. Amen. There is such a thing, God, as such chastisement for the child of God who chooses sin over the will of God. Amen. The Bible says, for whom the Lord loved, he's chastised and scourges every son whom he received. God isn't playing this morning. Amen. Because he's a, sin is a hard taskmaster. It has been said that sin will take you farther than you want to go. It'll keep you longer than you want to stay and make you pay more than you can afford to pay. Amen. I got news for you. Some of you are spin out already. Some of you don't know what to do because you spent so much time here and there and there was nothing fruitful in your life. Amen. Proverbs 13 and 15 says, good understanding gains favor. Anybody need the favor of God? Anybody need God in your life right now? Amen. God's elect is, has his favor. God avenges the, his elects when they pray. Amen. When they are in trouble and when they need deliverance from a certain thing. Amen. When they're being ridiculed by situations. When they're being ignored by, by the raises they should have been. When they're being slandered by somebody who's already been slandered before. Amen. When they're being cussed out on a regular basis. When they're being criticized. Amen. When they're being abused for the things that they didn't say they did. Amen. Passed over, persecuted, and injured. He watches over me day and night, and I thank God for being there in the night seasons of my life. And I've had some dark times in my life, amen. Uh, you will find yourself in some dark times in your life. Uh, people will start looking at you funny when your money is funny and your change is strange, amen. Uh, when there's more night seasons than any other seasons. Uh, but the word of God can bring light to your situation, amen. You can be dressed up, casket shop, looking good, and still be in darkness, amen. I've been in some dark places and I gotta let you know, amen. Darkness will captivate you, it will hold you, but I thank God for what He's doing in my life, amen. God won't pass judgment on you until He warns you. I gotta let somebody know you've been warned already. You've been warned about your circumstances, you've been warned about your past life, you've been warned about the sin that you're in now. There's something within her, I'm talking about Lot's wife, that turned her back toward Sodom. You see, the problem with Lot's wife is that she had her eyes on all the wrong things in life. Amen. So when you take your eyes off the things of God and start looking at the wrong things in life, you'll head down the wrong road. She was looking back on things in life. She was looking back on a lost life. She was looking back on a lost lifestyle. Looking back on a lost city. Amen. Things that was never to be again. Things that are gone and she'll never see again. Amen. She was trying to go back and get a color television. She was trying to go back and get a new car. She was trying to go back and get them things that she lost, but she has already been warned, don't turn back. There's a danger in turning back and looking back on life. 
I got to tell somebody this morning, whatever you're gazing at determines the path of your feet this morning. I got a quote from a man named Bob Deffenball. He says that once our direction is set, our destination is also determined. For it is now only a matter of time and some decisions may seem very significant, but they're set a particular course for our lives. Decisions you make in life seem very important. But the final outcome can be very tragic. If you turn down a wrong street, if you go down a wrong avenue, you could come crippled and paralyzed in some things. You will shorten your life and acquire some disease. Judge might give you more time than you can handle. Amen. He might give your children more time than they can handle. You might lose a loved one to divorce. So don't turn back. Don't look back. Amen. The Bible says, therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Don't touch that which is unclean and I will receive you. Stop gazing on worldly things. Stop looking at what the world allures you. Amen. For all that's in the world is the pride of life and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. The apostle Paul says I press on to a higher calling and to the goal of Jesus Christ. Amen. You might not be able to erase your past from your memory but you should not never let it obstruct your pressing on toward a higher calling in Jesus Christ. Uh, Lot's wife was disbelief. Lot's wife was disobedience. Lot's wife was deception. Amen. She probably had one, everybody food in the family. She didn't know. Everybody didn't know about her problems and dilemmas. Amen. They, they probably thought she was truly saved. They thought everyone had a food. She thought she had good, but the Bible says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Uh, what you reap, you shall sow. What you sow, you shall reap in life. Amen. Uh, God is not mocked about what you're doing. He's not fooled about what you're doing. So every time you turn out the lights don't mean God can't see what's going on in a room. Amen. The, the problem with Lot's wife is the same problem that many of us have today. She made a profession of place of faith and she had been looking like she was born again but she was still lost in a world. She proved what she was when she looked back at Sodom but her heart was still in Sodom. Amen. The, the old Jerry's had a song called Your Mind is here with me but your body your body is here with me but your mind is on the other side of town I got a question this morning where's your mind at this morning where your body at this morning what you got your mind on right now amen you ought to ask God to take care of those evil thoughts that's in your mind let me ask you are you loving God this morning are you studying your Bible this morning are you doing what you're supposed to be doing amen Jesus already warned us in this same text he says anybody touching the gospel plow and looking back isn't fit for the kingdom of God. Amen. Don't look like you a church member that ain't got something going on. Amen. I gotta tell somebody Jesus Christ is my redeemer. He came to save me. He came to deliver me. This morning I'm gonna take heed to everything in his word. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall want not. He making me lie down in green pastures. He leading me beside still waters this morning. He restored my soul. He leading me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Jesus is the Alpha. He is the Omega. He's a bright and morning star. He's the road of Sharon. Amen. He is and he will bring you out of some circumstances. Every time you look back, God will get you back on the right track. Amen. He's the good shepherd. He will see danger before danger come to you. Jesus is the friend of sinners. Amen. He's the anchor of my soul. He'll move me out of some dangerous situation. He's the living bread. He came down from heaven. I just got to let somebody know that Jesus has done anything for you this morning. If it's not something for you, you don't have to look back. You don't have to worry about what's going on. Is he all right? Is he all right? I know he's all right. Ain't he all right, somebody? Tell the old say, I know he's all right. Ain't Jesus all right this morning? Has he done something for you today? You don't have to look back down a road of emptiness. You don't have to look down a road of guilt. You don't have to turn back and look at what everybody else got to say. Because Jesus has brought you out of the darkness and into the marvelous light. The danger of looking back. Don't look back. Keep pressing forward. God will move you on and he'll move danger out of your way.
Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Can anybody give God some praise for that word? Oh, can anybody really give God some praise for that word from on high? I've discovered that every message ain't designed to shout you. Sometimes God will give you some stuff that sanctify you. You do know what sanctify means. It means to be set apart, to be made holy. And every now and then, God will give us a little strong meat. Amen. He'd have been talking about you're going to receive a million dollars in the next week. You've been running all over this building. If he told you you're going to get married, somebody going to touch you. And I wish I had some help. You'd have been shouting up, and hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. But when God sent a word telling you not to look back, Oh, y'all ain't feeling the preacher this morning. Thank God for this preacher. Amen. Amen. Thank God for his word. And I want to encourage you, Reverend, there will be times when, when you preach, you ain't going to get no amen. Ain't nobody going to be waving no holy hands. Amen. Ain't going to be no jumping up and down. But do what the Lord has instructed you to do. Amen. Amen. Thank God again for his word, the danger of looking back look back you tend to linger in the past why would you linger over your baby's daddy and he left you three years ago amen why, why you why are you still caught up in the job you lost to the position you never got promoted to. Why? Why? Why be stuck? Amen. The danger of looking back. I don't know about you, but if I'm going to fall, I want to fall forward and not backwards. At least I'll be gaining. Yeah. A little bit. Amen. There might be somebody here this morning who have heard the word and the word touched your soul and your spirit. And you want to make the devil angry by coming and saying, Lord, thank you. Amen. Somebody here this morning, I don't know who this word was for. Perhaps it was just for me. But somebody in here today know that God has spoken to your spirit today for his word will never go forth. Come on, Lord. We're standing all over the building that we might issue an invitation to you, man, woman, boy, or girl the day that you hear his voice harden not your heart don't give the devil room for victory in your life don't allow him to that's all right bro
Is there another today? Is there another? Every head bowed, every eye closed. I call it to me. Is there another today? Is there another? Why don't you give the enemy a black eye and just tell him, say, hey. I ain't going there no more. Agree with me. A part of mine. Is there another today? Is there another? Be, be supplied. Hard unto me. Need you to survive. Reach over and grab your neighbor's hand and just sing that song. Come on, come on. of you who believe in the power of prayer, I want you to join me. For this our brother has come asking that the church family would pray his strength in the Lord as he assumes the care of his two grandchildren. for oneself is enough but having the burden of children when you've reached an age where there's so many barriers so many things that would hinder communication and understanding We pray right now, oh God, that you would step right now in the midst of us. We pray, Master, that you would do what you've always done. Heal, help, and make whole. Father, we understand that you are able to do all things that there is nothing that we can ask you that you don't have the power to do. And so Father, right now in the name of Jesus we come on the behalf of this our brother who is humbly seeking your guidance and your help. For Lord, the care of his grandchildren has been thrust upon him. And Father, he needs your strength. 
He needs your prevailing power. Father, he needs your help in, in times like these. So God, we pray that thou would touch this situation. Give him the strength that he needs. Undergird him, dear master, with all of your power and your fortitude. Touch him in such a way, master, that the benefit and blessing for these two young men will not be hampered nor hindered. Give him an understanding mind. Transcend time right now in the name of Jesus. He needs your courage. Transcend the barriers. Break down the walls that separate you from age. Help them to see him and help him to see them, oh God. You be a God in the midst. And then, Father, we, we ask that you would touch the mother right now. Oh, Master, wherever she may be, wherever she may be found, Master, help her to understand that this is a gift from God. For you find pleasure in little children. And Father, we are mindful that except we become as little children. Except we have the honesty, the forgiveness, the strength and energy, the fortitude of little children. We shall in no ways enter into the kingdom. These are trying times, Master. The world is giving up on our little black boys. Satan and sin is enticing them to come into the world. Dope dealers and drug traffickers and a life of lefitiousness and is constantly calling their name. Statistics say, Master, they, they won't make it to the age of 12 years. But God, you got power. You got power above all power. And so, Lord, we pray that you would be with them in this dark and dismal hour. Be with this grandfather. Strengthen him, Master. Hold him up. Make provisions for not only him, but those that will be now on in his household. Let him not go without. Be a wall around them as the walls around Jerusalem. Under their feet as a sure foundation. Over their head as a mighty shelter. This we ask of you, God. And then, Father, help us as a church family. But we understand that you have called us to live in community. That it takes a tribe to raise a child. It takes all of us, Master, walking hand in hand, strengthening and guiding, and, and when needed, Master, discipline one another. We pray, oh God, that you would help this family, help this grandfather, help these two children. Then, Father, when you, they have grown old, they become of age. 
we are mindful of what you said in your word when they are old. They will not depart.